Hey everyone, Ryan here, back on the channel and back in Calgary after almost six days in Vegas. It was only supposed to be three and a half, uh, but in the in the meantime, the, the Calgary Flames have begun their free agency period, and they've made some moves, so we thought might as well hop on and discuss uh, the seven moves they made, technically eight. Uh, they signed seven players who were not previously under NHL contracts with the Flames, and then they signed an eighth player to a pretty hefty extension. So let's start from the player that, all due respect, will have the, the least impact, most likely, on the Flames roster to probably the player that might have the most. So starting off, let's go with uh, defenseman Jonathan Aspero signed a one-year two-way deal worth $775,000 at the NHL level. Uh, Aspero uh, spent last year with uh, the Calgary Wranglers on an AHL contract. Uh, before that, he spent four years uh, under contract in the Ottawa Senators system. He came into the Flames camp last year on a, on a PTO and played well enough to get an AHL deal and played well enough on his AHL deal to get an NHL deal. Uh, he had 33 points in 66 games last year. Uh, he was primarily an offensive specialist, uh, played a lot in the power play, generated a lot of his offense in the power play. Uh, otherwise, five on five, kind of a third pairing guy. But, you know, for a Wranglers team that, uh, you know, they're going to have a lot of young players on it next year, especially young defensemen. Uh, Aspro, he's 25. He's sort of been there and done that. And he's a, a veteran pro who can kind of insulate the kids a bit. So I don't know if he's going to necessarily be uh, an NHL level difference maker. He's still 25. He might still keep developing. You're very rarely the same player at 25 that you are at 30. Um, but, you know, he's, at the very least, he's earned his opportunity on an, on an NHL deal, and we'll see how he does. Uh, strangely enough, uh, another two-way deal signed uh, with $775,000 is from a familiar name. Justin Kirkland is back. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, Justin Kirkland is uh, a veteran of the Flames system. Uh, he was a, a third-round pick of Nashville back in 2014. Uh, he played in their system for three years, uh, didn't get qualified, came and, and played with the Stockton Heat for three years. Then the last couple of years, he sort of bounced around a bit. Uh, he played with the, the Ducks, far, primarily in the farm team. He played last year in the Coyote system, primarily with Tucson. Uh, he had 30 points in 43 games last year with the Roadrunners. And he's returning to the Flame system. And it's a Flame system that has sort of lost uh, a few key veteran bodies, uh, notably Ben Jones signed with Minnesota. Um, so if you're the Wranglers, it would be helpful to sort of have some some you know steady hands uh, who can help out the team, and some again some veterans that can sort of help insulate kind of a younger group. And you know he pr makes the he's going to make the four group deeper, and he's someone who's played NHL games, uh, not a lot, but he's played NHL games. And so if you need to throw someone into the NHL short term uh, instead of throwing in a kid who might not be ready, you can put Kirkland. He he gives you some options that other players might not. Uh, similar player on a two-way deal, Martin Furk. Uh, he's 30. He signed a one-year two-way deal with $775,000. Uh, he was a second-round pick of Detroit in 2012. Uh, he spent a bunch of time in Detroit system, uh, six years uh, with the Red Wings, uh, up and down, primarily with a big club. Uh, he was with Carolina very briefly due to a waiver claim, but otherwise mostly spent his time with Detroit. Uh, then spent a couple, uh, three seasons with the Kings organization, uh, spent a year on the St. Louis Blues farm team. Uh, he spent last year in Switzerland, but now he's back. Uh, he had 64 points in 67 AHL games two years ago when he played for the Blues farm team in Springfield. Um, defensively, he is worse than Kirkland. Offensively, he's better than Kirkland. He's an offensive specialist. Uh, he will be good on the power play. He'll help out the Wranglers a lot. And again, kind of like Kirkland, he's a guy who's played a lot of pro hockey, so you can throw him in the NHL at short notice. And you know, if if things go poorly for him, he's 30 and he's not really a, a long-term proposition in the organization. So he's someone that gives you a lot of wiggle room with your kids. Now let's head into some of the signings that might have a bit more of an NHL impact. Let's start with goaltender Devin Cooley. He's 27. He signed a two-year deal uh, worth $775,000 uh, in both years at the NHL level. It's sort of a, what we would call the 1.5-way deal. Uh, the first year is a two-way deal. The second year is a one-way deal, uh, which might project him to be not so much guaranteed or you know a shoe-in to get uh, NHL looks in the next year or two, but 
you can kind of see why he'd want to sign. You know, it, it seems the the opportunity is kind of implied there. Uh, he was a college boy, spent three years with Nashville, assisted one energy level, uh, did not get re-signed, and then split last season between the Buffalo Sabres and the San Jose Sharks. Uh, he, you know, he's, he slots as a third stringer on paper, but he's, he's shown fairly well at the American League level. And at the very least, you know, he is the guy that you want to have as your third goalie because you know he's going to work and he's going to push. And if you're Justin Wolf, you you need to be pushed a bit. Uh, with the departure of Jacob Markstrom, the Flames goaltending tandem is Dan Vildar coming off an injury and Justin Wolf, who's played 18 NHL games. And Wolf has a very, very exemplary resume, but you don't want to just give it to him. You want him to have to battle and take starts rather than just be given them. And Cooley is a guy that, you know, he, he seems hungry and he'll be a guy who pushes, I think. So I think... You know, it's a it's a depth move, but I think it, it could be a pretty useful depth move. Uh, next up, blue liner Jake Bean joins the Calgary Flames. He's 26. Uh, he signs a two-year deal with 1.75 million dollars. Uh, he is very prominently a former member of the Calgary Hitmen. Uh, his father is John Bean, formerly the CEO and president of Calgary Sports and Entertainment. Uh, he was the first round pick of the of the Carolina Hurricanes in 2016. Spent three years with the Hurricanes, moved over to the Blue Jackets for another three years, and you know now he's on his way back to Calgary. Uh, he is a really interesting player. Uh, there's a lot of potential there, and you know he's a really up tempo offensive defenseman. Defensively, he's nothing special, but you know he's his skills are more on the offensive side of the game. Uh, he won the AHL's uh, Defenseman of the Year award while he was uh, in the Carolina system. So th- there's definitely some talent there. He had 13 points in 72 games last year in Columbus. He He's just a guy that both in Carolina and Columbus, he just wasn't able to really latch onto a spot. And, you know, we'll see what he does in Calgary. At the very least, a uh, two-year deal will give him an opportunity. Um, the, uh, the, the, ba- the downside of Bean's addition is, uh, more likely than not, it does spell the end uh, in the Flames organization for Alder Shillington. Uh, Shillington, um, 27, he's a year older than uh, than Bean. He qualified as an unrestricted free agent due to years of service. And, you know, he and the Flames just weren't able to come to terms before he decided to test the open market. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, on paper, it seems like the Flames just have more guys signed than there are guaranteed spots. And so, you know, it appears that Shillington will have to be, you know, applying his trade elsewhere. Uh, it's, a, it's a shame in the sense that, you know, Oliver is a really fun player, really engaging person, and it would have been nice to sort of see a bit more of him. We only really saw one year of Shillington as a full-time NHLer, and he was really good, but it was just a question of, you know, he had been in the system for so long and pushing for an opportunity, and then he got his opportunity, and then he unfortunately had to miss the better part of two years dealing with his mental health challenges. So, you know, he's uh, you know, wish him all the best, and you, you're just kind of disappointed. It would have been it would have been a nice story to sort of you know continue, uh, for lack of a better term, the the feel good story of him continuing to play with the Flames and continuing to to push because he's definitely got the potential to be something really interesting at the pro level, and you know, hopefully he puts it together. Uh, Another returning player uh, along the lines of Jake Bean, Ryan Lomberg, uh, signed a two-year deal with $2 million per season. He's 29. He's a right wing. Um, he's a familiar name. He got signed by the Flames uh, coming out of college. Uh, he spent two years in the American Hockey League on AHL deals, impressed enough to get an NHL deal. Uh, and then he spent uh, three years in the Flames system, didn't get qualified. They weren't able to come to terms uh, with him on uh, you know, a, a deal. And then so he spent he went to Florida, spent four years in Florida system and became a full timer. And so he got a cup of coffee in Calgary. And, you know, I don't think the opportunity was necessarily here uh, for him. And, you know, he managed to, to make it for himself in Florida. And he's coming off a Stanley Cup championship uh, a few weeks ago uh, against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, he, he was a, he's a role player. He is what he is. He's uh, he had seven points last year in 75 games. He's a fourth liner slash 3.5 liner uh he's never going to play high in rotation but he's going to he can kill penalties he can bring pace and the flames are really excited about uh you know basically his swagger it's it's going to be a group i think that has some long nights here and there the next year or two and having someone like lomberg around to sort of keep things light and keep things good and fun and exciting uh i think it could be be good for the group so you know that is that's ryan lomberg uh the biggest uh Free, free agency signing the Flames made was Anthony Mantha, who signed a one-year deal worth $3.5 million at the NHL level. Uh, 
it's a one-way deal, so it's $3.5 million everywhere. And he gets a, an 18 no trade. Uh, Mantha's 29. He's a right wing. Uh, he was a, a first-round pick of the Red Wings in 2013. And he spent most of his time with the Red Wings system, you know, better, almost six years. Uh, spent a few years with Washington. Split last season between the Capitals and the, the Vegas Gold Knights. Uh, he had 44 points in 74 games last year with uh, Vegas and Washington. Um, you know, he's, he's a good offensive player, good shot. Uh, you know, he'll play in the power play. He'll play top six minutes. Uh, he probably will not be killing penalties. That's just not his jam. And the Flames have guys, especially wingers, who are a bit more attuned to that. But you know, he's the he's the kind of guy that, you know, he's a, he's a veteran player. And, you know, if you want to read, uh, read between the lines, he has a degree of control over where he goes. Uh, this is essentially a show me contract for Mantha coming off of uh, a few years where he hasn't really been, I think exactly what he wanted to be. And, you know, if you're the flames, you get, it's a pump and dump. You potentially get an opportunity to have Mantha come in, play him high on the power play, high in the rotation, boost his value, and then flip him at the trade deadline for, for picks or prospects. And if you're Mantha, you're fine with that, but you want some control. So the 18 no trade gives you a little bit of control over where you don't want to go. And so, you know, those are those are how deals get made. A little bit of uh, a little bit of balancing between the two sides. But I think ultimately this could work out for both for both Z, or both the player and uh, the team. And last but not least, the biggest money contract the Flames gave out on July 1st was thankfully to one of their own players. Uh, they signed a five year contract extension for uh, forward Yegor Sharangovich. Uh, Sharangovich will be paid $5.75 million a year starting in 2025-26. He's got a year left on his current deal, making $3.1 million. So uh, he doesn't quite double his pay, but he gets pretty close. Uh, his deal has a 10-team no trade for the first four years and then an 18-team no trade for his last year. Uh, the cool thing is, so he's 26 now. Uh, he just turned 26. Uh, he'll be 31 when his contract extension ends. Uh, you know, he'll turn 32 uh, the June after it ends. But, you know, he's a guy that if you want to keep him, you're going to have him through your prime, you know, his prime years. And so if the idea is you want to have someone who's versatile, like Sharon Govich, who can play on the power play, who can kill penalties, who can play center, who can play the wings, he gives you a lot of different options and a lot of versatility. Uh, I don't know if he's, uh, you know, a quote-unquote high-end offensive contributor, but he scored, you know, he's, he scored 31 goals last year. So at the very least, he's a versatile player who has scored 31 goals. And that is really valuable, I think, for both player and team, uh, you know. So, he'll, like I said, he's, he's going to be still fairly young when the contract extension ends. And so wherever the Flames are in 2030, if they want to keep him, I don't think – extending him would be out of the realm of possibility and if they want to flip him he's still going to have value in 2030 when he's 31 years old so it's again much like the mantha deal i think this is something that's a pretty good deal it gives him some flexibility and some versatility and you know allows both player and team to get some value and so you know at the end of the day that's that's kind of how deals get done so that's what the flames did and the opening of free agency they still have more than $20 million in cap space available, so they have the ability to do a lot of different things. What do you think they should do with the cap space? Should they ride it out and hold on to it and try to be bankers for other teams during the, at the trade deadline? Or should they try to grab players who are a little bit overpaid relative to you know probably what their point production says they should be making and try to improve the team in the short term? Or you know should they try to do a little of both and keep some flexibility? Let us know what you think the Flames should do in the comments and make sure to like, share, and subscribe.